name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Thank you. Thank you, Vahid, for having me here. Uh, my name is Angad. And uh, am I audible? Is, is my voice all right? Oh, audio is perfect. Go ahead. All right, perfect. So my name is Angad and I'm an entrepreneur and I'm uh, also uh, mentoring millennials. I'm based out of New Delhi in India. And uh, yeah, I'm on a mission to empower millennials in creating what they truly desire with simple, easy tools that I have learned from my uh, experience in self-development and attending a lot of workshops myself and uh, following uh, amazing pages like uh, yours, you know, based on Think and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill and all of that. So thank so you So let's dive me. into it. Let's dive into Think and Grow Rich. What are a couple yeah. of things that you want to share with us about thinking? Well, first of all, at what age did you get exposed to thinking go rich? Well, honestly, I saw the book lying around my house. Uh, I think it was probably my father's book and he probably never read it. So it was, it has been there uh, since I was a kid and it o had always intrigued me, uh, you know, but it's a pretty thick book and the whole idea of think and grow rich, the title itself is so catchy that I ended up reading it probably when I was out of college. Yeah, post-college, uh, I ended up reading it fully. And since then, I've read it thrice. So in oh. fact, uh, even right now, it is one of the books that I'm reading. I'm reading six books right now. And Thick and Grow Rich is one of the books. And, uh, you know, it is something that uh, whenever I'm in the middle of a new project or I start a new, uh, you know, a very critical project is when I open the book. And I start reading Napoleon Hill. I start reading, you know, like it is so valuable. Every page of it is so valuable. So, yeah, to answer your question, right out of college was the first time I read the book. Yeah. What are some of the principles that you think are, obviously they're all important, but what is it, what do you think that helped you the most out of those principles? Well, honestly, um, the ones that I have implemented and I have produced results in, you know, I won't say that there's anything in that book that is uh, not worth, uh, you know, giving attention to, but I'll share what worked for me. Yeah. So uh, number one point that worked for me was uh, when he shares about specialized knowledge, how he shares, uh, uh, you know, like you've got to get really good at whatever one thing you do. And get to the depth of it, you know, it's, uh, you know, in, in today's date, we are looking at, you know, how much more can I know? How much more knowledge can I grow? But what I learned from Think and Grow Rich was one thing, and that was, it's the depth of knowledge that matters. It could be one subject and go deep into that subject. And that's what matters. So that's the first thing uh, that, uh, you know, I learned was the specialized knowledge. The second thing that I got was, uh, you know, they have a famous uh, line, a famous quote from the book. Uh, let me quote. It says, a quitter never wins and a winner never quits. Yeah. So I think the power of persistence, the, you know, you've got to be persistent with everything. The last man standing, uh, so to say, wins. That's the second thing uh, that I learned also. I mean, how he shares... But the last one might have a lot of bruises, a lot of cuts, a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> they might they might be smiling, but <laughs> behind the scene, they've got a lot of cuts. I, I, I agree. Continue. Go ahead. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, it's something like where uh, you're never an overnight success. It takes you maybe 10, 15, 20 years of hard work and persistence to be an overnight success. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. And this is this is one of the ideas that I think you might have been covering it with millennials. I don't know if you are or not, but I'm, I'm sure that you have talked about that, that a lot of them are looking for, they're looking for shortcuts. And I keep yep. telling people, you got to mm -hmm. pick one thing and go at it for many, many years. It, you know, it wasn't like Facebook, Google, Amazon became mm -hmm. an overnight success. That was not the case. Netflix, all of these big companies that we all know. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other smaller companies that we don't know that have gone through the same transition and the same process. I, I would definitely agree with that. And, you know, coming with the power of persistence is also we are today living in an age of instant gratification. You know, if I, uh, for example, post a picture right now, I want instantly 
100 likes or 1000 likes and i want instant i it's it's because we have been served the amazons and the netflixes and the googles have served the millennials everything on a silver platter where the idea of hard work and persistence has totally <clears throat> you know kind of been forgotten and that's the secret that no one is talking about no one is talking about persistence no one is talking about you know going after your goal in a focused intelligent actionable manner nobody's talking about getting punches in the face this yep. is the crazy part nobody's talking about it and it's mm. the crazy i mean i don't want to say nobody there are a few gurus that are talking about it but we're not talking about it in a mass section where everybody thinks it's so funny uh, yeah, there's actually yeah. a lawsuit going on right now as we speak in california i don't know if it's over or not but i know it's been going on that mm-hmm. these uh, these law schools predicted mm-hmm. and sold a lot of students the idea that you come to our school mm-hmm. you get your law degree you pass the bar you will become an attorney and then right out of get go you can get a 120 to 200,000 salary job so a lot of gullible students they said okay well you know what let me go to four year school let me pass the bar let me pay this 150 200,000 of student debt probably more right now as we speak they pay that and then they come out they can't even find an internship it, it's very very important for people to understand that means they can't even work for free let alone 120 to 200,000 salary so the students are actually suing the school for misrepresentation and that goes back to the reality should have been that the school should have said listen if you're the top 5% of the class you might have a chance but if you're not be prepared to work for free be work be prepared for the first 4 or 5 years you may not get a good salary all of these things be prepared to have a bright future not a bright two years after your school so it's just a different mindset that you embedded that hey this shit is going to take time go yep. work on your craft go do internship at some type of a law school i mean attorney firm today before you even start going to law school to get the experience hands on experience and then go do it so even our schooling is miss now i don't think they have any ill um intention but maybe unintentionally they are misleading mm-hmm. or maybe it could be intentional i don't know but i'm mm-hmm. hoping that it's not intentional right but they're misleading all of these younger generations that they could be doing i mean it's crazy you know mm-hmm. and 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 just i know i'm talking right here but i'm going to give it took me two and a half years of working for my uncle at a repair shop at a auto repair shop while i was still going to school it mm-hmm. took me two and a half years before they allowed me to replace brakes on my own where i did not need a supervision took two and a half two years half of me working before they let me do that yep because they didn't trust it they're like what the heck are you talking about you can't just start tomorrow and you know jeopardize people's you know safety and go do that and this yep. was just like changing a couple of brake pads which is probably one of the simplest things you could do on a car right beside oil change two and a half years man now they get a, a bar degree they think they're going to get the biggest case and be able yeah, to make millions yeah. of dollars i'm like come on you got to that's why it says think and gorge i think the yep. entire book is in the first word think yep 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 it's the power of thinking and uh, you know he also napoleon hill also mentions how to get the position you desire you know that's how i got my internship in fact you know i you know there's a given blueprint in it what exactly how to make your resume how exactly to write it what should be the format of it how to approach the companies that you desire how to get double the pay of what you're getting by approaching the company in the set format with the script so it's as simple as just follow the instructions given in the book and boom you land your first uh, that's how i uh, you know find it so valuable and uh, in fact i still and have that crazy. you could download it on internet internet for free that's yeah. crazy to me you yeah. can yeah. literally download it it will listen even if you're in the middle of i don't know middle of somewhere that mm-hmm. you don't even have your own internet 
you could literally ask somebody to download it for you and you could put your hands on it and just read it on your phone on a PDF. That's how crazy it is. I don't know. What do you think of doing a thinking grow rich book and charging maybe five thousand dollars for a copy of book? Maybe people will take it more seriously. Absolutely. I think it is got a lot to do with the value, the perceived value, so to say. You know, if something is there for free, I'm not uh, valuing it as much as we get. We put something at stake for it. You know, if I'm putting something at stake, so to say, my time and my money, then I would want to get the most value out of it. So that's why when I read the book thrice, the third time I read it and uh, it was coming across. I also have the audible of thinking about it, by the way. So you know, I I do it when I. That's on YouTube uh, for free too. It's ten and a oh, half yeah. hours. Is on YouTube yeah. for free. He's been there yeah. for many years. Absolutely, but how it requires work to actually note down and do the actions that he has mentioned to you know do that uh, morning affirmations or do the evening affirmations. Every day, focused, intelligent, daily, and that's what it takes to fill in, uh, you know, create that those kind of riches. And the kind of example he shared, I mean, it's pretty phenomenal, yeah. No, oh, definitely. I mean, you got it. But imagine, here is here. Well, I want to get your opinion on it. Would you recommend a person reading seventy different books, or would you recommend them reading the same book seventy times? So I believe uh, this is uh, also what Bob Proctor. I follow Bob Proctor closely, and uh, he also uh, shares in one of his seminars. Uh, I think that's the Science of Getting Rich seminar, where he shares, and he still carries that old book that he got in the 40s or 1950s, and uh, the pages are torn and yellow, and he's still carrying that book. Like this is how I created my life. This is the book. This is the secret. and uh, i would strongly recommend this is one of the books i would say that is an essential if you're an entrepreneur or if you have the least bit of self development if you want to create grow grow yourself grow your inner being i would say it's a must read and reading it once is just like brushing off the top you know what i mean it's like the tip of the iceberg you got to get no, deeper listen. man i i've been reading the damn thing for 12 13 years and it was so funny wow one of the one of the coaches asked me yesterday and mm. and I, my comment was this that even though i've been reading it studying it and been talking mm. about it for so many years mm. i don't even think i understand 5% of it because every time i open it there's a new circumstances and i yeah. go through it i'm like oh my god where was this so it has a different meaning every time you go through it that's why i feel yeah. like it's not a newspaper or news article you just go through it once and you got to think no this book mm. needs to be studied it's yep. different than reading yep 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 and there's a secret in it and I'm, i i say you read it till you find the secret yeah the oh. secret that he talks about you got to keep reading it till you find the secret for yourself and then create the riches i agree with that so here's my question where do you think millennials are going what are things that they should be doing but they're not doing what are the top 3 things So I would say to begin with the first step in getting where you want to go is knowing what you want. So today 80% people don't know what they want in life. So they are, you know, I didn't know what I wanted in life until I thought sat down, switched off my mobile phone, switched off the internet, sat in a alone in a room and then actually took some time, took the weekend off to figure out what I want. So step number 1 is figure out get clear on what you really want in life and then based on that create the action plan and you know strategize take focused intelligent action every day to get closer to it every day and use the power of visualization you know visualize you want to uh, get present to what you would feel like with the, what you know with all the five senses you know what it would look like what my goal for example my uh, goal is uh, to be healthy and fit so what would that look like you know what would that feel like what would that taste like what would that smell like you know with all my five senses so yeah step number 1 get clear what you want uh, one step i missed was why do you want it like you know a lot of times we get to the point where okay i want to be fit 
I want to, you know, uh, lose uh, five kilos. But why? The why is very important. In his book, uh, the author Simon Sinek, he mentions. So he's uh, he's read the book. You must have heard of the book Find Your Why. Correct. So he mentions yes, how how for human beings, it's most important to know why we do it. So if I am if I would like to lose five five pounds, why do I want to do that? Is it because I want to be more attractive to the opposite sex? or is it because uh, i want to fit in that uh, nice uh, shirt so what's the why behind it that will get me out of bed in the morning and jump me out of bed in the morning and go for that treadmill or go for that run or go for that uh, biking uh, tour you know so my why for example for fitness why i want to be fit why i wake up 5 in the morning and do my yoga is because i want to live 100 years now that's a why that will get me out of bed i want to play lawn tennis with my grandchildren that's why i want to get up in in the morning and uh, do my fitness routine so it's very important for us to know why we want it and is it important enough because if the why is important then it will make us kind of take action you know move our butt off the bed or the chair and then take focused intelligent action which will get us closer to the goals uh, that we are probably aiming for yeah does it make sense I agree with that. no that's totally true a lot of people don't know what they want the minute that you find that i think it's like we're like looking at it from here and then when we get closer to what we want now we have that laser focus on what we want um, mm-hmm. and i think it needs again it goes back to the book you have to start thinking If you start thinking what you want, chances are you have a lot of stuff in your life that you didn't want, but you got. Yeah. And that's yeah. because you weren't specific. Yep. Yep. If you're not specific, how we're going to, you know, you just but we are doing that with a lot of different things. You know mm-hmm. specifically today if you need to go grocery shopping, you know how you're going to go, what you need, <laughs> what store you're going to, you know those things. But imagine if you had that for our jobs, businesses, you know yeah. all of these different things that you want it so that would be the 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 big takeaway from the book that get yeah, i think more focused that's a great example that you took uh, you know a grocery shopping you know today if you go to one of the grocery shopping uh, places if you don't have a list man you'll get lost for the entire day if you don't know exactly what you went for you will be just wasting your time and uh, energy because it and you'll end up buying a lot of things that you didn't want and at the same time it creates confusion now yeah. you're wasting your brain power the mental activity is going to yeah. things that are not productive in your life in a big mm-hmm. scheme of things you know mm-hmm. which aisle of the That's supermarket it. i went through has yeah. no <laughs> barrier in my future so now i just spend it let's just say on an easy yeah. trip I spend 3 minutes wasting time. Now I don't mean just time. You just wasted time, but you wasted mm. brain power and mental activity. Those 3 minutes, imagine you do that once every like 4 days, right? Mm. You add that up for 10 years. Now you just lost 10, 15, 20 days. Yep. Yep. So when you add those things up and this was just one example of grocery shopping. Absolutely. Imagine for driving, imagine for doing laundry, imagine for cleaning the house. Imagine how much time we waste in our businesses. You add all of those up, you literally end up with only a couple hours of productivity the whole entire day. Yep. Add the best. Yep. Yep. And then people say oh, I don't have any time. I'm like let's find out why you don't have time. Where are you spending yep. it? So anyway, I'm not going to get into time management. That's a lot. But just to, so how do people find you? So uh, look up uh, my Instagram handle Angad B Singh, uh, my website angadbsingh.com. and uh, i'm on facebook angad b singh 10 so uh, linkedin angad b singh so yeah feel free to reach out for any questions or concerns or comments if you liked it good press a thumbs up if you didn't like it comment below we'll try to improve awesome listen i want to thank you so much for taking this afternoon out your busy schedule being with us hopefully we'll be able to do some more collaboration thank you for being here thank you. and definitely thank you stay safe Thank you for having me. Stay safe you too and have a good one. Bye. You got to talk to you later. Bye-bye.